Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I want to demonstrate an interesting new feature that's found in the current beta version of Photoshop. It's called the Generative Workspace. If you're someone who has to use AI to create images, then I think the Generative Workspace is going to be a great asset to you. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. As you can see, I have the beta version of Photoshop open. To get to the Generative Workspace, go up to the Edit menu and then down to Generative Workspace. And with the Generative Workspace, you could very easily and quickly add prompts for a type of image that you want to create. To do that, go towards the bottom and it says Describe the image you want to make. Yeah, put your details there, what you want to create. In this case, I'm going to create a woman in a red shirt on a busy street in a big city. Then below that, you could pick the aspect ratio. I'm going to go with a portrait or a landscape, I'm sorry, a landscape image, so four to three. I could use a reference image if I'd like, so I could use one from their built-in gallery, or I could upload an image of my own. I'm not going to do that yet but I will show you how to do that in a moment. Uh, I could add an effect, and you're probably familiar with these from when we used generative AI in the past. So you could add different types of effects to the image to give it a different look. Or you could add a variable, and I'm going to explain that in a moment. So right now I just want to create an image with a woman in a red shirt on a busy street in a big city. Then I could use fast mode or normal mode. Fast mode will go very quickly, but the images won't be, probably won't be as high quality, especially if you have a person in them. Uh, a lot of times if you're using fast mode and you're generating a person, they're going to have extra fingers, their face is going to look funny and stuff like that. But it is something you could do to quickly get an idea um, as to whether or not this is the look you want. So I'm going to keep it in fast mode right now. We're going to click generate. And you'll see that it will now quickly give me a number of examples um, of a woman in a red shirt uh, on a busy street. So to see one, we can just double click on it to look at it. And then we could page through them. There's another one. And in these cases, actually using fast mode, uh, they don't look too bad. Uh, they don't necessarily look totally realistic, but they don't look too bad at all. Now, what about some of these other options we have down here at the bottom? Let's start out with add variable. I wrote that I wanted to see a woman in a red shirt on a busy street in a big city. But let's just say, I'm going to double click on the word red, that I'd like to see, well, maybe I'd like to see her with a blue shirt and maybe a pink shirt. So I could just highlight where I wrote red, click add variable, and you could see that it puts brackets around red. Then what you need to do then is to just put a comma, a space, and then put the next variable you want. I mentioned blue, and I'll put a comma, and I'll put pink. Now, we already have a woman in a red shirt, so I'm going to change the red to green. So we have green, blue, and pink. So we're going to see a woman in a green shirt, blue shirt, and pink shirt on a busy street in a, in a big city. Now, it gave me four examples of the woman with the red shirt. In this case, it's going to give me 12 more examples. Four of a woman in green, four in blue, four in pink. I'm going to keep it in fast mode and click generate. And you'll notice that relatively quickly, and I'll go back to the timeline view, they call it, where you could see all of the images at once. You'll see all the different variables. So here they are. So we could page through them, just double click, and there's our woman in green. And we could just go through them very quickly. Like this. Now it's, I guess when it gets stuck on a color, like uh, this gave me a woman in a blue shirt, or different women in a blue shirt, but they're wearing the exact same blue shirt and it's a striped blue shirt. So I guess it kind of gets stuck on a theme. But you can see here. And actually they didn't turn out too bad, even though I had it in fast mode. Now, that's the variable. Uh, let's just get rid of it so we're not generating so much images here. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's uh, do an entirely different prompt. Let's do, do a woman in a cafe 
drinking coffee. All right, something like that. Um, but this time, let's use an effect with this. So we're going to click on effects, and you can see that we have these. These are the same effects that were in generative AI or still in generative AI in the full, the current version of Photoshop. Uh, but we have them here now. So we're going to get a photo. You can do art if you like. Uh, you can choose some type of popular um, look or effect you want the image to look like. You go to these movements. Um, so you've got these different movements. Uh, you got themes. You got techniques, effects, materials, concept. Let's see. Let's go to movements and let's do something that I don't necessarily like, but just something that will look interesting. Let's go with impressionism. So I don't know if it's going to give us a dolly look or what, but we'll go with that. And then we're going to click generate. Well, we'll click that. And you can see that it has this little blue check mark. That means we do have an effect turned on. And then we'll click generate. And again, we'll go back to the timeline view. And it's going to give us four because I only have the one uh, variable, single variable, a woman in a cafe. And let's see what it looks like. Oh, that's absolutely horrible. And we'll go to the next one. And that's not very good either. Now, these, this effect is probably, you know, using this impressionistic effect probably wasn't the best move. But I guess you could get an idea of what it would give you. Now, let's go back here and let's clear all. So we're not going to use an effect anymore. But instead, I did clear that, right? Yeah, I cleared it. So we're just going to use, um, we'll leave it off totally so it's not on, so we don't have that blue check mark anymore. Let's use a reference image instead. And I have a very specific reference image that I chose. We have a composition reference and we have a style reference. So we could match the style of an image. So if you have an image that is very kind of art deco look to it, or maybe has a very um, modernistic look to it, you would upload it to the style part. But if you have an image that has specific elements that you want repeated in your image, you would upload it to the composition reference. Now, in this case, I have one that I want it to kind of imitate the composition. So I'm going to go to upload image. And as I mentioned, it is a specific image I chose on purpose. Uh, if we look at it, you'll notice that it is a woman. She has a red top on, um, and she's in the cafe looking at the camera. So it's kind of a distinctive-looking woman in a distinctive-looking cafe. Now, you'll also notice that the image has um, a specific type of editing done to it, where it has this kind of matte look. And because I've, I'm uploading it, to the composition part, it shouldn't imitate that actual look. So we're going to click uh, generate. It should just take elements from the scene. Let me go back here to the timeline view and generate those. And we'll see what it does. So we'll go here and you'll notice then now it doesn't have that kind of matte look that the other image has. It has just the general scene the elements in the scene, the way she is uh, sideways to the camera in the reference image. All these images are the same way. There's some depth behind her in these, just like my reference image, and so on. So they're very specific. Now, let's add um, another reference image. So we're going to keep this reference image, but we're going to add that same photo as the reference image. And again, I'll let you take a look at it. There's some depth behind her. She has the red shirt on. There's flowers on the table. She's like kind of sideways to the camera, turned towards the camera. So we have that, that look there. And we're going to add this now, the same one, to uh, the style reference. So let it upload. And then you have also a strength slider under each uh, section. So if you want it to imitate the composition more or less, you can move this strength slider to the right or left and the same thing for the style. We'll leave both right in the middle at 50 and we'll click generate. And again, we'll go back to the timeline view and see what it does. Now it should pick up on 
the way the image is edited as well as what the elements in the scene are. Now you'll notice too, uh, in the original image, the woman was of Asian heritage. You'll see here now because I have, uh, you know, it referencing also the um, style. It gave me, in this case, four images and they're all Asian women. Now the editing isn't necessarily uh, similar to the original image, but it definitely uh, gave me the same um, type of person as the original image was. Whereas originally it did not, as you could see. So that's that. Now, if you want to change anything, you could click clear here and start over. Uh, you could go and change it uh, to a portrait mode or widescreen, uh, something here. You could stack these so you could have reference images with effects. You could have reference images with effects and number of different variables. So you could generate a lot of different ones and you could do things in slow mode. So let's just do this in slow mode so you could see um, just maybe the improved results we might get. So we'll stay with a woman in a cafe uh, drinking coffee and uh, let's just add something else um, relaxing. All right. And we're not using a reference image. We're not using an effect. We're just simple like that. No extra variables. We're going to take it off fast mode. We're going to go up here to the timeline view so we could see it. And then we'll go down here and click generate. Now this will take longer than the fast mode, but supposedly it will give us improved results. It is going to give us uh, four different variations on our theme and I'll let it do it. And I'll probably have to pause the record. Oh no, it came back fairly quickly. So let's see if these are any better. So as we come in, we'll see there's one, whether or not it's better or not is probably su subjective. Uh, her fingers are messed up. This often happens when you're generating images of people. Uh, it seems to not really understand how to recreate fingers and toes and sometimes arms and legs. Their fingers are better, I think, in that one. There might be a little funky right up in here. And the last one, and her right hand is a little messed up. So uh, generally speaking, these aren't necessarily better. Um, that probably is the best one as far as her fingers are concerned. Um, so... You could click up here and get inspiration. So you could use a reference image up here, like as information in, uh, inspiration. So instead of like giving it a prompt, let's say I just want to see, well, let's go with a rubber ducky, something totally setting uh, different. You could click uh, this user settings. It's not letting me do it, but it is in beta. All right. So, oh. I see. When I clicked on it, it put down here, I'm sorry, rubber duck in bubble bath. And um, it gave me an effect as well. I'm not sure exactly what effect. Oh, it gave me, I don't know what it gave me. It gave me fantasy. That's what it gave me there. And we'll click generate. As you can see, this is the first time I've actually done inspiration. But I have it uh, again uh, in uh, in regular mode. It's not in fast mode. I should have probably put it in fast mode. Uh, so it's going to take um, a few seconds to generate. So if you just need some, if, you know, you're bored one day and you just want to create something, uh, you can. And just like that. And the cool thing is uh, this will be here. So if I go and I just clearly quick Photoshop, this is again the beta version of Photoshop, and I reopen the beta version of Photoshop, and then once it's open, I go back to the generative workspace. All those previous examples will be there. So we'll go up to edit, generative workspace, and you'll notice it's going to take a minute to show me them, and they're still there. So that's pretty cool because in the past, um, they you had to save your work in Photoshop as a Photoshop file in order to get back uh, to anything that you generated in that um, in that session, and it was saved in the PSD file, and you'd have a number of PSD files maybe with all the different work. Well, now everything's still here. 
So if I ever want to go back, I need an image of a woman on a busy street wearing a red shirt. Um, I could do that. It's right here. And I could just easily pop back and grab it and, um, you know, use it if I want to. So uh, once you do have something you like, let's just say I don't really like that one. Let's just say I like this one. You could go over here and you could make it a favorite. You could download it. Uh, you could trash it totally if you don't like it. And you, or you just open it up into Photoshop. Once you do click on open, it's open to Photoshop, and then you can do editing on it if you need to. So that's it. That's the new generative workspace in Photoshop. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.